Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Tamara Todd and I'm a pro makeup artist from London. Today's video is going to be a request video from one of my followers, Christina Costage. Hi, Christina, if you're listening. She commented underneath one of my videos and asked, how did I become a makeup artist? So today we're going to get ready with me and I will share my story with you. And we're gonna start with one of my favorite foundations, Tom Ford. You saw the day I purchased this foundation and I did not realize how expensive it was. Probably one of the most expensive products in my kit and I really really like this foundation on my kind of maturing skin. <laughs> hate saying that but I'm now nearly 40. Well, I mean I'm 30 and 36 or 37. I keep forgetting my age. I feel like after 25, I can't even remember what age I am anymore. I guess it's a good thing. I never connected myself to numbers. All right, so coming back to my story, I have discovered makeup for myself much later in my life and I wish I discovered it sooner, but where I'm from, by the way, I'm from Latvia, and whenever I was growing up, makeup artist profession was not even on the cards. Hairdressing was popular. Makeup artistry was just because beginning and in my family my family would never agree for me to become a makeup artist so I actually I have a degree in law I thought I was gonna fall in love with I mean I did in the beginning when I first enrolled into my university I really loved the studies but the deeper I was learning about the law the more I was falling out of love with it but besides the law I was always connected to dancing world ever since I was 13 I was doing hip-hop electric boogie so like anything that's to do with waves and body plasticity this was kind of a style that i really enjoyed we were jamming we were going for competitions to a neighboring countries like estonia and lithuania by the age of 16 all of my friends started to go out to the night clubs my dad was really strict so he didn't allow me to go to the night clubs at that age he used to say you're not gonna go to the night clubs until you get married <laughs> I'm still not married. So he wasn't allowing me to go to the parties with my friends. So I actually had to lie. I had to tell my dad that I am going to the hip hop competitions to a neighboring uh, country, but which is overnight. We would have to take a bus and come back the next day or in two days. So I was sneaking out and staying at my friends and <laughs> going to the nightclubs. I think I must have been like around 17 years of age by then. And all of my friends were doing that. I mean, their parents were not as strict as mine. We would have nightclubs and super clubs several dance floors and then every dance floor had their own music have a chill out more chilled music if you're tired from dancing hip-hop area all the hip hoppers were hanging out there is a house area and then there is a trance area it was like a huge world it was so good back in the day when we were going to these parties there was always dancers it was a huge huge go-go dancing era I was dancing away all night in front of the go-go dancers and I was like figuring out that I can actually do better than a lot of dancers and I know that there is girls that get paid for it. So why wouldn't I do the same? So around 17 years of age, this is when I kind of became interested in the idea of um, becoming a go-go dancer. Of course, my dad would never allow me to do that. This is my new concealers from Hourglass. One of the best concealers I have tried so far. So when I told to my dad that I want to dance in the nightclubs, he was like, are you a prostitute? like as if I was gonna take my clothes off. So he couldn't understand the concept of dancing for money in the clubs. Of course, in my old school dad's mind, you were gonna be a stripper, but what I was doing was nothing to do with stripping. And it was all about how well you could move to the house music. He wouldn't allow me to dance. I actually had to wait until I turned 18. Was one audition, I was 17 and a half, came to the club and I was like, I really wanna dance and I, I can't dance until I turn 18. My dad wouldn't allow me, so they probably love behind the scenes. But they said that's fine, so come back when you when your dad allows you to come back. On a day when I turned 18, the next weekend I was in that club. It was just such a freedom for me being in the environment that I was so eager to be in, doing what I love and getting paid for it. It was just the best. I just felt like the world was mine. I was counting minutes until I could go and dance again, until it's Thursday, and then on Thursday I was like, yes, tomorrow I'm gonna be dancing. And it was literally the best time. Now I'm going to add the Kiko contouring stick. You guys know, I love those a lot. Usually I probably would just like do this, 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 and then blend it, but as I'm talking and it slows me down a lot, I'm gonna actually be doing this with a, with a brush. So I started to dance and I was doing more additions and dancing in the more clubs. 
was love and life really. The next summer my best friend was like do you want to come Turkey with me? I've never been to Turkey why not let's do it. So me and my friend we went for a short holiday Marmaris and it was beautiful beautiful holiday spot. There was long bar strip 100 clubs door by door and you could just go to a, a different club like every five minutes if you wanted to and of course they had dancers and a lot of them were actually drug queens and I was just fascinated. They were really strong dancers and they always had that full attire on the makeup on, the hair done and the costumes were insane. They were like goddesses. When we were dancing we did our own makeup. There was no such thing as a makeup artist. We even made our own costumes. And so when I went to Turkey I saw the drag queens and I was like wow this is just next level. I'd like to dance here. Because we would always get on the podium and we would always dance our asses off, you know? Like, I just remember dancing for three, four hours straight. The club just gives you drinks for free, so so we stayed longer in a place. So after this trip, I was like, I really enjoyed it. I just want to go back and travel to a hot country and, uh, and dance in the summertime. That was like a bulb. And it happened. So the next year I came back, I went to the clubs that I liked and I said, listen, I want to dance here. I can stay here for three months or whatever visa was permitting me. This is how I stayed in Turkey uh, over the whole summer what I love again getting paid and having free holidays. I was doing this for a good four or five years and then in my country it started to become popular to actually hire dancers to dance abroad. Ibiza was one of those places where uh, one of my friends had a contract that she could bring the girls over. I was like well why don't you why don't you come for a casting? I just remember I was like what the fuck is Ibiza? I I've never heard of this I don't care for it I go to Turkey and they took me. Amnesia took me for the casting and uh, last minute I just decided to change my mind and so I went to Turkey and it wasn't as good uh, of a year and that put a like a huge dot in my Turkey kind of a life. So the next year when the casting happened again, they didn't take me. What do you mean they didn't take me? Like last year you wanted me and, and this year you didn't take me. My friend put me on a casting for another place, which was El Divino, which is Leo now. They were looking for really tall girls and I'm like 5'11". They automatically loved me. In Latvia we have a lot of tall girls, so there was actually a group of us traveling from Latvia to spend the summer in Ibiza. If you guys been to Ibiza, you know the music is electronic. Went to Amnesia opening, no decorations, and music was just like hardcore like Ibiza style electronic music. And I, I just want to be out of here. I don't like this music. I don't like the place. There's no decor. Like everything is just so bare. It's like being in a warehouse. And I wasn't in that type of parties at all. What am I doing here? Why am I not in Turkey? <laughs> and it took me a good few night outs to understand that Ibiza is a very different different island to Turkey. It's less commercial. It's more about bare nature. Parties can be different as well. They can be a proper warehouse parties and they also can be super fun like Blue Marlin and Pacha. These were my favorite ones. Up until Ibiza I was doing my own makeup and hair, making my own outfits. In Ibiza everything changed. We had a full styling team with a full costume specifically made for us. Every night we're dressed up in a different outfits with a different makeup and hair. There were specific people who were doing this for us. We're made up by a professional team every night and this is where my fascination with makeup has begun. I had my favorite makeup artist that I was waiting to get painted by. I didn't want any average ones. I had my favorite guys and girls. I feel like I fell in love with the idea of transformation and by transformation I mean you were a completely different person every night depending on the mood, on the outfit and it was just so incredible. By then I wasn't thinking about becoming a makeup artist. I just wanted to dance. I also understood that the dancing is not forever. It's wonderful experience. It took me all over the world. I knew that I didn't want to be a 40 year old dancer. I had to have a plan B. It was a little bit tough on me at that stage because anything new I'm gonna start is going to take time to get good at and also to progress in your career with. But the problem with dancing is that it only can get you so far. Like after the dancing what can you become? I was a freestyle dancer. I was never good at training anybody else. Would never be be a teacher, dancing manager in a club. As a career that didn't appeal to me, I knew that I could do better than that. It was really tough because I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I hear talks of famous makeup artists that say that's all I wanted to do ever since I was a little girl. And that wasn't me at all. Ever since I was a little girl, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I remember when we were finishing the school and everybody were like, oh, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be an economist. I'm going to be this. Like I had no idea 
what I wanted to do with my life. And if I'm honest, that pressure on a young people straight out of school to start a career, it's great if you know exactly what you want to do with your life. In front of me, there were two options, either go to economical studies or you go to law. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to law then. But it wasn't kind of my choice. Nobody asked what I wanted back then, which I don't think is, it's not right, but that's how our parents were back then. If that was up to me, if I'm honest, I was considering art school and perhaps if my parents weren't so persistent, maybe I would have gone to art school and maybe my makeup would take off sooner. Or maybe I'll become an artist, I don't know. By the way, guys, sorry, I talk so much. I need to powder. Powder from MAC mineralized skin finish powder and so I was talking about my despairs with my friends. Friends were like well you're good at makeup why don't you do makeup? I guess I was good at makeup back then because obviously of all of my travels and watching how people do makeup I guess I had interest in it but I never realized how much interest I actually do have. My friends later in life told me that you were always around makeup artists you were always watching what they were doing you were always asking questions. I guess it was so natural to me that I never it never occurred that that's what I wanted to do. When I came to London, one of the options for me was actually to do the event planning. I thought it's more serious of a job and I thought I'm very good at organizing things so perhaps I could be a good event planner. I've done my research and I have contacted a few famous companies and no one get back to me. Right guys, I'm gonna duplicate blusher with Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury. I just remember that no one got back to me and I was like, you know, I can't waste my life waiting for companies to get back to me. Why don't I do a short makeup course and if I don't like it, at least I can do makeup a little bit better than before. I have enrolled in a two-week makeup course, LA Makeup Academy. I have fallen in love with the makeup course so much. Gosh, this is brilliant. Like, I love what I do. It's like dancing. And I also can make a career out of it. Uh, Milani uh, Baked Highlighter, by the way. After this course, I was like, this is what I'm going to do now. I could dance at night and I could do photo shoots during the daytime, practice on my friends, models, try to connect with photographers. 12 years ago when I started, everybody in London were kind of collaborating and testing. There was so much going on. I feel like there's less of that now. I don't test as much, but even when I did test more before COVID, I just felt like it was much harder to find decent teams to work with than when I began. I think industry is just changing a little bit. I've been freelance for a few years and I decided that I am missing hair skills. Everywhere I was going, people were like, can you do hair? I never done anything to my hair, never mind anybody else's. And I was like, I can't do hair and I don't want to be out of my depth. So I decided to enroll to another makeup course that included hair. I'm just gonna add a little uh, brown eyeshadows onto my eyes from this palette, Catrice Cosmetics, quite nice palette. I was trying to learn makeup and hair throughout the centuries on my own. And as much information as I could find, there was a lot of it, I just found that it was very overwhelming. I read about 50s and 80s and 90s and 70s and it's just like a big mush in my head if I'm gonna go to another course, let it be the course that will put all of this in my brain. 1950s is this, 60s is this, 70s is this, hair and makeup. Because I know that to be a good makeup artist, you really need to understand the history of makeup. Where did it all begin and how did we even come to, you know, where we are now with it? In the end, I chose uh, Grease Pain Makeup Academy, one of the best film, TV and theater makeup schools in the city. Grease Pain doesn't exist anymore, but it's now either makeup Makeup Academy where I actually teach now. So our course covered everything film, TV and theater, prosthetics and fashion course I didn't actually take in either because I already kind of was doing fashion anyway. The course was really intense. It was four months every day, Monday to Friday, and it was very intense. I just remember the amount of information we were getting. It was insane. They're gonna line the lash line with a Limbus brown pencil. I was just like a sponge. I soak enough everything our tutors were giving us and it was just fascinating to learn so much more about history of makeup and hair as well and hair was so difficult for me at the time because I've never touched hair to that degree beforehand and I was in the course I think it was like a short lesson of a bridal hairstyle I remember my teacher Liz she was really good at that and she would do the demo and then I would write down every single detail everything sectioning pinning and I would do it and it would just not look the same way and it was so frustrating. Makeup was a little bit more natural to me and of course it's like I feel like makeup is easy 
easier to learn because we already do makeup on ourselves every day. Hair was just so, so difficult. And there were a few times where I thought I'm gonna break that mannequin head. Then I made a decision, no matter what it's gonna take me, I'm gonna learn this and I'm gonna perfect it. And I'm gonna get so good at it. I'm gonna do hairstyles, any hairstyle I want, I'll be able to do it. And that took us several years of a hardcore practice. I got dolly heads at home and I was um, practicing every single day, speaking a new hairstyle, watching YouTube tutorial, and I was doing it like up until I become good many many times and very slowly like super slowly my hair started to become better it took a few years but honestly like it's just hard hard persistent work in order to get good at something and after the course I tried uh, to do makeup for theater which I thought I was gonna be in love with but in fact when I've tried it I just was like it's not my environment I do not want to do theatrical makeup and it's okay I mean you need to try to understand what you like because makeup is such a fascinating thing. I'm gonna take a bit of this color and this color to set the pencil. As a makeup artist, like there are so many different things that you can do. There are makeup artists that sit at home and only do makeup on themselves and they never even touch another face and can, they can make living out of this. Then there's makeup artists that only do theater. There's makeup artists that do film only. There's makeup artists that do red carpet only or fashion only or everything together. Like there's prosthetics as well on top of this. There's bridal makeup industry. There is teaching. There is so much in makeup. And it's so wonderful that we're all a little bit different. I love my bridal side of things and I adore photo shoots and models. You know, this is what I'm good and strong at. Like there's just so much that, that we can do and make a living out of it. It's just fascinating. Guys, I talk so much. I hope you enjoy this. And I'm sorry if my makeup is not going to be super uh, perfect as it is on the models. If I'm honest, I do makeup on other people and it's almost like I can't even do my own makeup flawlessly anymore. I don't know if you know what I mean. I remember first day when I have reversed the brush from myself onto a model. That was hard hard. Oh my god, when will I ever be able to do this? But now it, I feel like it's the other way around. Like it's reversing the brush onto me, not being able to step back and assess what I've done just because I can't really see. And I put mascara on, but uh, if I'm honest, I'm not very happy with my lashes at the moment because I need to do another round of LVL. Some of them have grown out, some not, so they're actually tangling in many different directions. I'm gonna leave them for now and I think I'm gonna go over and add a slight three quarter uh, liner. See, I feel like I've just been working on other people for way too long. I can't even understand if I'm doing good makeup on myself or not anymore. It's everything is a practice and if I'm honest I fall out of practice doing my own makeup a long time ago. I find it more complicated, like I find it harder on myself than on other people now. I hope they're even enough. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the color underneath my lower lashes. I did not cover them in the mascara today. So yeah guys, I hope my story was interesting to you. I mean, everybody has everybody has their own path. And as I said before, I wish I was that makeup artist that covered makeup from a very young age and would know that that's exactly what you want to be doing. That would save me a lot of time <laughs> figuring out what I want to do with my life. But everybody has their own path and this is my path. I'm enjoying the journey. I really like what makeup does to me and and I also really like that I managed to turn my passions into my work, I guess. So I can still do what I love and, you know, get paid for it. And the wonderful thing about it is as well that there is no limit. You can be the over-counter makeup artist all your life and have a steady income and have that job, you know, security. Or you can just be freelancer or you can start your own YouTube and everything can take you to a very different place. Like it, it can be anything you want it to be. And this is what fascinates me the most. Now guys, I'm gonna add a little bit of, uh, what's the name? Maybelline Nude Whisper. Maybelline Liner in Nude Whisper. So I am losing my summer color. And actually, I can use this liner again. A few months ago, when I was a little bit more tanned, couldn't see it on my skin. I really like this liner. It's really inexpensive, very creamy. I like to use it almost like a shadow. So when I line my lips, 
<clears throat> and you may have already seen a video where I show you how I overline my lips. It's a brilliant color because it just creates a slight shadow around my lips. And the color I'm gonna be using today is my new color from Charlotte Tilbury. It's called Runway Royalty. They're very comfortable on the lips and they last pretty long. They just feel really nice on the lips, like really creamy. Sometimes I also go over again with a liner. Fix final things. My boyfriend calls me clown lips when I overline. He says, you missed it. He says, what kind of makeup artist are you if you missed your lips? That's boys for you, they don't understand anything. A powder one more time, especially around these areas here that reflect the light. I'm just gonna give it one more powder. Maybe a little bit in the middle here. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for joining me for my bedtime story. I really enjoyed sharing it with you. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. I also want to know if you are a makeup artist watching me, what's your story? How did you fall into makeup? Have you always known that this is what you want to do? Or are you like me, just discovering passion along the way? I don't know how long this video will uh, turn up to be, but it's been an hour me sitting talking here. So I hope you stick around until the very end. Thank you once again and I see you on my next one.